going online. <laughs> Hi everybody and greetings from Rovaniemi and we are really pleased to uh, welcome you to our first webinar. Please notice that this is also new for us. We haven't used uh, Periscope before so if there's technical problems just be kind to us. But yeah, um, you are joining now our first webinar on our project called Animals and Responsible Tourism. And the idea of our webinars is to keep the information sharing really informal. So this is one example of it. And this is going to last about 10 to 15 minutes, let's see. And we are really um, uh, welcoming your questions. If you want to ask something during what we are talking, we will be really pleased to answer. And also you can send the um, message uh, later on if we don't have the time to answer at that point. So just be communicating with us. So we want to uh, present ourselves. So my name is Tarja Salmala and I work here in the Lappland University in Rovaniemi, Finland as a researcher in Lappland University and Multidimensional Tourism Institute. Hello, on my part as well. So my name is Mikko Eija and I'm working at the University of Lappland as well and uh, Multidimensional Tourism Institute. And uh, in this project I'm a working partner with Tarja, so I'm also a researcher and then there is Jose, who is behind the camera. Yeah, I'm here, Jose Carlos Garcia Rosel, behind the camera. Yes. <laughs> and I work as a senior lecturer at the Multidimensional Tourist Institute, University of Lapland. And in this research, I work as the project leader and project manager. Yes. But let's go on further. Okay, so uh, then shortly about this project. So um, as you may know, um, Tourists are becoming more and more aware of the issues related to animal welfare and tourism, so the, like the ethical treatment of animals. And uh, lately, the, these issues have uh, gathered a lot of uh, media attention. So probably you have heard about the Sarganimic case, about the dolphins and their uh, movement to Greece. So, and uh, since animal-based tourism is really important here, Lapland, so probably you know that uh, husky and reindeer safaris are really uh, popular around here. So this is a uh, background for the, this project, and un until now the, the focus of the uh, animal welfare project in, in Finland has been uh, mainly on safety and the use of uh, uh, or the ways the animals are used in tourism. So this, the purpose of this project is to uh, produce knowledge uh, about the significance of animals and their welfare uh, related to uh, tourism business and their, uh, and their consumer values. So this, we will look from the consumer point of view to animal welfare and how important it is to the tourists. Yeah, and our project is really uh, divided into three parts and now we have the first uh, work package, which we call them, we have three of them, and we have now work in this work package uh, from the end of uh, from the start of the August, so just for month one month. So our work is really in progress, and this webinar is at the beginning phase of the whole project. And it is really important to uh, notice uh, that we are working in close cooperation with international uh, networks and national networks. And one of our most important international network is the International Institute of Animal Ethics. And there, David Fennell and Mardos van der Goor are our uh, main uh, cooperators in this project. And I'm going to tell you a bit about the Work Package 1, which we are now dealing with. And it is really the background of the whole project that we have. And we have done a lot of networking, uh, following the media, reading the <coughs> academic research on animal tourism. We have also made dialogues and interviews with different stakeholders and interest groups. And uh, a really important part of this uh, work package has been to uh, find out about the certificates and quality labels that are uh, related to animal tourism specifically, <coughs> uh, both in national and international level. And <coughs> our focus has, for the first uh, uh, task for us, has been really wide. So we have been mapping out really across the globe different kind of certifications that relate to animal welfare and it has been a rather tough job. Uh, yes indeed, uh, so 
although the work has just started, so lasted uh, roughly one month for now, uh, we have made some very important notions about the certificates. So there is uh, uh, very few, actually very few national and, and inter international certificates which are available in tourism, which uh, focus really on animal welfare. Well, there is a lot of um, certificates which uh, tell about uh, ecotourism and so on, but there might be that there is only like one sentence about animal welfare. So there is a uh, really lack of these kind of certificates. Yeah, and one might find that there are really, really many when you come to zoos and aquariums, for example, and it is really great and they are really wide and international, for example, what's our goal of ethics and everything like that, but they are really focused on, for example, zoos. So they can't be um, used, for example, here in Lapland when we talk about husky, husky tourism or everything like that. So they aren't applicable to that, that kind of tourism. Uh, yeah, yeah as, as we are now um, in Finnish Lapland, which I already mentioned that reindeer and huskies are very, well, for example, those are very important animals in, in the rapish tourism industry. So uh, despite this, this fact, that it's really they are really important. There is a really, especially a lack of uh, national so Finnish Finnish level uh, certificates available related to animal welfare. And uh, also, uh, we have found that it's a big uh, shortcoming in the in these certificates. That many of them, like um, the meeting the criteria of the certificate, it um, depends on the only on the tourism uh, entrepreneur's own announcement. So there is no uh, audit or something, you, you just fill up a form and send it and they will grant you the... Yeah, <coughs> we have been discussing that uh, it is also a lot of issue about <coughs> money really, because it's really expensive to keep a certification system and to provide them, so many of them work as a really um, light basis, as you could say, but there are also exceptions, for example in uh, <coughs> northern countries, the nature's best that is in Sweden, it is really detailed and it has really uh, detailed uh, description, for example, wildlife tourism, fishing, hunting, and everything. So there are uh, a lot of, uh, how do you say, uh, forerunners, which we can also learn in the future of other uh, operators. Welcome and to the new people joining us here in the conversation. So oh, hello. Hello, yeah, it's nice. Hello. Uh, it has also uh, become evident <coughs> that there is a wide variety of certificates. For example, uh, you have certificates that really focus on, for example, animals that are held in captivity. For example, uh, making the welfare of the animals in zoos uh, better. So that is one kind of certificates. And then there is also certifications that really are all providers of certificates that uh, don't even <coughs> allow um, those kind of tour operators to their list that keep captive animals or for example, uh, promote game fishing. So it's, it's really wide. Yeah. So and, um, we have also found that there is uh, contradictions related to these uh, certificates. Um, like some large certificate um, providers, they have been criticized that they um, concentrate more on the interest of the, the companies than the interest of animals, for example, WASA, the World Association of Zoos and Aquariums. So they are one really big um, certificate pro providers, but they have been criticized that um, they they don't uh, consider the animal welfare. Yeah, it has a lot of contradictions because it really is a. Uh, organization that does take uh, animal welfare seriously because they are really a um, recognized uh, certificate provider. But for example, when it comes to the uh, YATSA, the Japanese also Association of Zoos and Aquariums, they held uh, YATSA in their member list even though it was uh, exposed that YATSA was, um, uh, how do you say, communicated with the slaughter of Tai Chi dolphins. So here we come to the social media pressure, which eventually uh, pushed uh, WhatsApp to, uh, how do you say, um, uh, to make a break for uh, Yatsa's membership. 
so it was again the whole pressure from outside audience that caused this, for example. Yeah, but uh, it remains to be pondered, uh, are some big certificate providing organizations so large that they have to make a lot of compromises when it comes to the certifications in animal tourism? And we have to uh, realize that maybe some um, need for smaller and more focused certification systems uh, will become of importance in the future. Uh, yes, so probably in the future, uh, some uh, specific field of animal tourism operators together with um, animal protection organizations and other experts, they uh, get together and uh, could form a new detailed certifications um, around animal welfare and tourism. So then, then it would be, it could serve as a better guarantee for animal welfare yeah. in the tourism industry. And you know, or also yeah. in for, for tourists and of course for the animals as well. Yes, and also uh, <coughs> when we discuss the, uh, the importance of our forthcoming work, work packages, because in work package three, which uh, starts next uh, year's August, uh, we will uh, deal or uh, cooperate closely with International Institute for Animal Ethics when we are going to do a pilot, when we are going to solve what kind of criteria would make it fit uh, to this uh, Arctic region. And here we could make those uh, first steps for this kind of more focused and more maybe smaller <laughs> certification systems than for example we have now available. So we are like uh, doing something really in practice in this project and it, it is really yeah. inspiring for us yeah. also. Yeah. So Jose, is there any questions for us? No, no questions so far, but um, um, so you have questions and please uh, feel free to ask. Yeah, and also when we are, because now we said that uh, this is our first webinar, yeah. we are going to have them <coughs> on a monthly basis. So uh, we will proceed with our work and we will have a lot of new information to share you. So if you want to join and would now feel that you don't have questions, but maybe you are interested in this topic, you can also maybe, uh, how do you say, prepare yourself for the next webinar and ask us then or anything. You can also contact us on Twitter. We are on their animal tour trip here. This and we are also uh, happy to discuss everything with you by email or anything. You can find our information. Uh, for example, this is the easiest way really to contact yeah, us yeah. if you want to stay stay tuned. Yeah, and the next webinar will be organized on Tuesday, 4th of October. So then, then we have proceeded in our work. So then, then we have more to tell you. Yeah. And there's one, one thing more I want to talk about so this project uh, the animal welfare and the responsible tourism is concentrating on the tourist point of view so related to animal welfare but uh, at the same time we are uh, implementing a, another project here in multidimensional tourism institute and it's called animal welfare in tourism services and it, this this project focuses more on the the animal welfare side of the not not the tourist uh, point of view, but the animal welfare. So, for example, we are um, looking at the needs of animals, like feeding and amount of work they are, uh, which is the amount of work they can do. And uh, so, yeah. So this is basically. So now we have two two project uh, around this team. So it's a really mm. really good thing. And it also tells a lot about um, <coughs> those we are really thankful to Pekes and uh, how do you say EACO, uh, European uh, uh, European Regional Development Fund. Yes, yeah. yes, to uh, granting, for example, this project. So it also, when we have two projects, it tells about the importance of this topic in, in Finland and in, in worldwide. So, and we are really uh, happy to be sharing to to project information really and we have researchers that work in both projects for example so we are really digging into the subject now but i think if you don't have any questions we would like to thank a lot of for your attention and this podcast can be uh, looked at uh, afterwards so you can share it please share it uh, via our twitter account for example so we can spread the word
Yeah. Thank you for okay. joining us, and see you next time. Yeah. Bye. Bye.